It's couches and porches and kitchen tables. It's stories shared and moments worth remembering. It's hoping and praying and taking chances. It's jokes and laughter and shoulders to cry on. It's questions and answers and I don't knows. It's knowing you don't have to figure it all out by yourself. It's messy and imperfect. It's giving and serving and growing better together. It's life and we weren't meant to do it alone. Life is better together. Well, hey everyone, uh, my name is Jonathan. I am the online campus pastor here. I'm also part of the teaching team, along with pastors uh, Jeff and Kip Jacob. Um, and also, oh, I wanna give a shout out to everyone who's watching online right now. Maybe if you're tuning into our podcast at a later date, or you're watching on YouTube at a later date, or you're watching right now, hello, welcome. Oh, and also an even specialer shout out to my kids, Lincoln and Delaney, who are watching right now. Last week, I called them out and they got so excited and they loved it. And so anyways, hi, I hope you guys are watching. You should be watching. Anyways, I'm talking to them like as if they're actually there. Anyways, um, <laughs> today I wanna open up with a question. Why do you come to Southlake? Why do you come to Southlake? Um, you can just keep that in your heart, you know, maybe think about, you know, why you attend this church. If you're online right now, um, actually would love it if you put, answered that question right now in the, in the chat. Why do you come to Southlake? What drew you here? What keeps you here? What brought you here? Why are you in church right now? Um, and just keep that question with you as, as, as we talk. Um, so today, we're gonna continue our series, Better Together. Um, and I'm going to continue the conversation that Pastor Kip uh, started last week. And we're gonna anchor into the same Bible verse that he uh, introduced to us last week. And that's Acts chapter two, verses 42 through 47. Uh, let's go ahead and read that together. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Um, and I, I want to kind of just set the context a little bit. Maybe if you weren't here last week with Pastor Kip, but uh, I just want to kind of explain kind of where we are kind of in the history of the church and, and in scripture. We're in Acts chapter 2, and, and what had just happened just before this is Jesus Christ came down from heaven to earth. Though he was rich, you know, he became poor. Though he was God, he became man, lived a perfect life for 33 years, died on the cross for the sins of the world, defeats death, defeats sin. He gets up from the grave, right? This is good stuff. This is what we celebrate on Easter. He defeats it all. He defeats the grave. And, and right about, he's right about when he's about to depart from earth to heaven, he says to his guys, he says to his people, guys, stay here in Jerusalem until the power of the Holy Spirit comes down upon you. And the Bible says in Acts chapter two, that happens. Uh, actually in Acts, yeah, that, that the day of Pentecost comes, uh, which is the day the Holy Spirit, you know, descends upon them and they're baptized in the Holy Spirit and they're filled with power. They're filled with so much ability. And actually the very first message preached at the birth of the church, 3,000 people come to know Jesus. They, they receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And what's so cool about it is the person who preached that message was someone who uh, actually rejected Jesus, you know, a, a few days ago, a few weeks ago, just very recent in his past. And so they have the power of the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, immediately it paints the picture of what the early church looks like gathered, what we just read that they devoted themselves to teaching and to fellowship. They were breaking bread house to house. They were praying together. There were signs and wonders. They were sharing with each other. Um, again, Lincoln and Delaney, if you're watching this, uh, they were sharing together. <laughs> in other words, like translation, we see the result of the gospel in the gathering of the people of God in the gathering of his church. And if, if I could put it this way, the church was more powerful on Monday than it was on Sunday. 
But there, there's something about the way God designed his church, not from Sunday to Sunday, not from service to service, but he designed his church, he desi designed you and I uh, for to be in, to be rooted in community, to be in relationship, to be together. Not a once a week activity, but an ongoing community that his church kept says this all the time, it's a, a kipism. If, if we have a library of kipisms, I don't know. But he says that the church is not about religion, it's about, yeah, see, they're listening, yeah. <laughs> it's about relationship. And, and if you see the way the church started, they were in houses together. They were breaking bread together. They were, they were reading the scriptures together. They had unity together. And the reason why they were so excited was, of course, because of their faith in Jesus Christ, who had just conquered the grave and, 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 and resurrected, and that they received Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, but because also they had connectivity together. They were together. And the enemy of your soul does everything in his power to get you isolated and to get you alone. So that you're, you may have received Jesus, but you don't have this fire. You don't have this connectivity. You're, you're just a survivor in faith, not really thriving in your faith. The enemy wants, wants you to look nothing like this picture that was just painted. Wants you isolated and alone. And some of us have been in this season. Some of us are in this season right now where we are isolated, where we feel alone. You might be sitting here in a room full of people. You might be online sitting next to friends and, and family members, but you still feel isolated and alone. The way God set up his church was not that you would have a great Sunday experience and starve until your next Sunday experience, but the way God designed this life is that we would be fulfilled every single day. That if you only eat on Sundays, you're going to starve throughout the week. And I love that we're getting, it feels like we're getting into a new rhythm. It feels like, like a, if I could say it this way, that a new normal is beginning to settle in. And Pastor Kip set the tone so well on Easter um, that, that we feel like there's this breaking free that's happening. Uh, but how unfortunate would it be to break free and then just return to a pattern return to a habit, return to a rhythm of church, a rhythm of community that was never fulfilling us to begin with. Like how unfortunate would it be to not take advantage of, of this opportunity of, of breaking free and, and a new normal settling in just to return to what was old. You know, to return to a way that, that might, have, might be falling short of the way Jesus really set up his church. I don't know if you guys have ever felt this way, um, but I remember back when I had just received Jesus. I was a freshman in high school, and, and I was so hungry. I was so excited. All I wanted to do was be in community and read my Bible. Um, all I wanted to do was just to learn more and grow and be with my friends and, 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 and be, with, be with my community, be at youth group, be with my youth pastor. That's all I wanted to do. And so I, I remember uh, talking to my youth pastor, and I said, I said, look, like, like I love Sundays, but, but, but they're just not enough. Like, like, Sunday morning is fantastic. Like, like I'm with my friends, and I'm, with, I'm, I'm learning in the Bible. But, but come Monday morning, I'm, I'm, I'm failing. I'm messing up. I'm back to my old ways. I'm sinning. I'm, I'm struggling with these, with these toxic thoughts. And I'm, I'm back with old friends at school and just, and just struggling. And, and, and I, I told her, I'm like, I, I, need, I need more. And she looked at me. I'll never forget this. She looked at me. And she was like, yeah, that's because that's the way God designed it. Like, Sundays aren't enough. Let's get you in community. We need day to day. You kind of get that feeling in Acts chapter 2. This day to day. We need community. We need the way Jesus set up his church. Not about church service, but about relationship. Because at the end of the day, when we're nearing the end of our life, um, you, you, we, we know this, we hear the stories all the time. We're not asking for more money. We're not asking for more fame or influence or power. What, what, we're, what we want at the end is we want our people. 
We want our community. We want more time with, with, with the people that are ours. Like our, our, we, we crave community. We need community. We need a support system. And actually, it was so cool. This week on Facebook and Instagram, on our social media accounts, uh, we had asked you the question, who was the first friend you made at church? And it was so encouraging to hear a couple stories of, of people who, who you guys met at church, and your life has been changed because of it. And I, I guarantee if, if, if I ask you now, like, who, who are some of the people you've met at church, you can start listing off names of people who have changed your life. And something that I hear all the time is, is the reason that we come to Southlake isn't necessarily because of, of the preaching. I'm sorry, Pastor Kip. Uh, um, it, it isn't always, I mean, the worship's incredible and often that gets said a lot. You know, I, I'm here because of the worship, but the main reason that people say, the reason why I come to Southlake is because of the people. I hear that, we hear that time and time again. You guys are awesome. You guys are an awesome community and you're an awesome people. And, and that's how it's supposed to be. There's supposed to be more community happening on the other six days of the week than the one day that we gather today to celebrate all that's happening on the other six days. The church is supposed to be stronger during the week than it is on Sunday. The problem is uh, a lot of us are convinced that, that it's all about Sunday to Sunday. It's all about the church experience and not really about community. The community secondary to the experience. A lot of us we struggle, I struggle, taking that step into community. I, I have a, a community that meets every Thursday night, and, and my wife can attest to this. Every Thursday night, I look at her and I say, you know, I, I don't want to go. I, I don't want to do that. Like, I'd rather stay home in my PJs watching a basketball game, because every Thursday night, there's a basketball game on, and, and I'd rather be doing anything else. But I go, and I never regret it. Because our point number one is our old nature wants us to hide and isolate. Our old nature wants us to hide and isolate. And when I have those thoughts of like, uh, you know, I just don't really want to go, that's my old nature creeping up. That's my old habits. That's my old rhythm saying, no, 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 no. Like, you don't need community. Stay home. Watch the, the, watch the basketball game. It's our Adam nature. It's our old nature. It's in our bones. We naturally want to hide. We naturally want to isolate. Our old nature wants us to isolate and hide. Our, our old nature, anytime sin creeps into the picture, there's always hiding involved. God says to Adam and Eve in the very beginning, first book of the Bible, he says, you can have anything you want. Anything you want. You just can't eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And of course they do. And, and watch what happens next in Genesis chapter 3. It says this in Genesis chapter 3. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? As soon, the moment sin creeps into the picture, as soon as we lean into our old nature of brokenness and sin, the direct result is hiding. The direct result is isolation. We don't want people to know what's really going on. If you're anything like me, um, I, I, feel like, I feel like I need to have everything in order in my life before I can really be vulnerable with people. Like, you know, in, in, in community um, on Thursday nights, you know, I, I tend to share things that, that I already have figured out. Like, oh, yeah, I'm struggling with this, but here's my answer. Here's my solution. Here's what I got going on. I hide the things that are really struggling with it. And I'm so natural at it. We're all so natural and so, so um, prone to hiding. Um, we all, and we all have our own version of it. Like, that's mine. We all have our own version of how we hide and how we isolate and how we cover up. Um, and no one has to teach you this. Like, from the beginning, no one has to teach you how to do this. Um, you know, if, if you're a parent of young kids, you know this. Um, I have a three-year-old, Delaney, and um, whenever, if she does something wrong, all I have to do is use my dad voice. I go, Delaney Jean, Delaney, you know, and, and like, like lay it down. And the first thing she does is she buries her face in mom. 
Like, and that's always what she does. And if you have young kids, you know exa it's exactly how it goes down, is, is they hide, they, 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 um, the, inst instinctively, they hide. They cry. I, there was one time Lincoln crawled under the bed to hide away from me. You know, and um, I, I'm a good dad. I don't, I'm not always disciplining them. But anyways, um, that, that's what happens. It's in our nature to hide. But community is the true pathway to freedom. We need community. We need connectivity. Our souls are craving it. But because of shame, because of sin, you know, we convince ourselves that we're not good enough for community. They won't accept me. They won't receive me. It's not that big of a deal. I'll figure it out myself. Like, like I, I'm good on my own. I, I'm not, who I am right now, it's not good enough yet. You know, and so I'll, I'll join a community, you know, next time it comes around. You know, I'll join a community later. You know, some of us are hiding, and the enemy is, is using this against you. The enemy of our soul wants nothing more than to keep you in isolation. So our old nature wants us to hide and isolate. The, the enemy wants to keep us there. The enemy takes your old nature and says, let's push you further into isolation. Well, let's per push you further into separation. And so point number two is the enemy wants you to hi hide and isolate. It's the devil himself that was cast out of heaven and kicked out of the community and wants you out of community too. It says this in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 15. It says this about Satan, about Lucifer. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol. Uh, to the lowest, lowest depths of the pit. It, it was the lead worshiper of heaven who was kicked out of the community, and because he was kicked down uh, and into hell, I'm going to fix my mic really quick before I keep going. I think it keeps falling. Cool. That, that works. Um, so anyways, it was the lead worshiper of heaven who was kicked out of the community. And because he was kicked out of the community, he wants you kicked out of the com community. Like, <laughs> he's like, he's, yeah, you ever have someone in your life who, because they don't get it, like, you don't get it either? Like, I, I, I sometimes, you know, we'll play basketball with some friends and stuff, and, and um, you know, I, I can... Some, sometimes it can get a little heated. And I've had people full on just because, because they've lost, because they, they can't play anymore, they full on take their ball home. Like they're like, nope, this is mine, I'm out. The enemy doesn't want you in community. So he fights to keep you out. Again, he doesn't want you thriving in your faith. He wants you just barely surviving in your faith. My question is, are you going to let your old nature and the enemy... Keep you out of what God has designed to take you into healing, to take you into freedom, to take you into true joy, to take you into authentic community. When sin creeps into our lives, when shame creeps into our lives, all of a sudden the enemy grabs hold of that and gets you to hide and gets you to isolate. And I wonder, you know, coming out of, of this season. You know, I, I, I love the weather. I love how open we are. But I just feel like there's still some of us who are, who are locked in isolation, who are locked in hiding, who, who have just been holed up for the past year without any true community, without any true friendship, without any true, true community a, a, around you. And I wonder if there's anyone here who just feels beaten up, who feels worn, who feels maybe ashamed of some of the things that maybe you've done. And you're just convinced that, I just need to stay away from community. Like, like, like that, that's not for me. And what you really need is you need people around you who love you, who support you, who encourage you, who pray for you, who, 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 break, who breaks bread with you. Because you may know you're forgiven up here. I know what the Bible says about forgiveness. Like, I, we know that we're forgiven by God. But you feel forgiven when you receive it from someone else. 
Like you feel the love of God when you receive it here in the horizontal. Yes, you can know it in the vertical. You can know it in your relationship with God. But I love how God works through the community, works through the people around you to speak truth into you. In fact, our, our Danielle, who led worship um, today and is leading worship today, you know, God spoke to her and she gave me a word before I came up here. And that ministered to my heart so well. Uh, Rudy's telling me just to skip this and go to the, the this guy. All right, Rudy, got it. <laughs> tell, me, tell me when we're all good to go. Awesome. Cool. Whoa. That might be working a little bit better. Um, thank you, Rudy. Thank you, Derek. You guys are awesome. Um, I'm going to say that right there. Cool. Um, anyways. Um, oh, yeah. What I was saying is, is that you may know you're forgiven up here. And you may know it, you know, in the vertical. You know, God, 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 um, God speaks to you and you know it, but you feel it in community. You feel it when God works through the people around you. Um, you receive it in community. I, I got to be honest with you, and, and I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know, Kip, you can come up and correct me if, 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 if you don't like this. But, but <laughs> yeah, I know you will. But I, I just, I don't think a lot of growth happens on Sunday morning. I, I just don't think a lot. Enlightenment happens. Revelation happens. You may be sitting here saying, okay, yeah, Jonathan, I get it. You know, I've, I've received something. But, but change really happens in community. That's where accountability happens. That's where rubber meets road. Because, man, it is so easy to receive enlightenment, to receive a revelation, to receive a word from God and walk out these doors, go out to brunch, and be on your day. But the moment you step into communion and you say, God, God said this to me, and, 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 you know, I'm really feeling like God wants me to change this, and you say that to someone else, and you're in relationship with someone else, all of a sudden it becomes real. All of a sudden there, there's momentum. All of a sudden there's movement in your life. And you may be like Adam and Eve right now, eating an apple that they shouldn't have eaten, you know, breaking God's law in some way. But I want to tell you, it doesn't matter what it was. It doesn't matter what it is. Whatever you've done, it is not bigger than grace. It is not bigger than God. It is not greater than the forgiveness that God offers to you. And it does not exclude you from the healing community of God. And when we're feeling this way, when we're just feeling isolated, when we're feeling like, like we need to hide, when we're feeling like what Adam and Eve did, uh, here's what God does, is he calls out to them, where are you? Why are you isolating? Why are you hiding? Like, where are you, Adam? Where are you, Eve? Adam and Eve, they, they recognize that they're naked. They're ashamed of their sin. And so physically, literally, they grab fig leaves and they try to cover up their sin. They try to cover up. You know, they, they, they just, they kind of like, they, they, they hide. Um, they grab a bunch of fig leaves and they hide. And a little bit later, something filled with so much grace, so much tenderness, and so much love happens. It's in Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. So again, Adam and Eve are hiding, and God's calling out to them. And it says this, The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. It's easy just to read past that. It's easy just to skip past that. But many theologians believe that this is the very first sacrifice as a result of sin. You see, they're, they're hastily thrown, you know, fig leaves and they're, they're, <laughs> their fig leaf apron, basically, you know, that they used to cover their sin. It wasn't enough. It didn't actually cover up their sin. Their own efforts to camouflage their sin wasn't working. It was just hiding it. There was no real covering. There was no real healing. There was no real freedom that they could step into because of their hiding. And isn't this true for us? When we hide our sin, when we isolate ourselves, when we're not open and honest with our loved ones and with our community and what's really going on in our lives, all it is is a fig leaf apron hiding our sin. It's kicking the can down the road to deal with it later. Closing our eyes and pretending like it's not a problem right now. I don't need to deal with this right now. It's not affecting me right now. But really, it's keeping you isolated and alone. And I wonder, 
is God calling to you today? Where are you? You've been isolated. You've been alone. You've been hiding. And God hasn't made you a garment of skin like he did with Adam and Eve. He sacrificed his son, Jesus Christ, offering us the ultimate forgiveness for our sin so that we can not only step into community with him, with God, but we can step into community with each other. Because point number three, true community, authentic community, genuine community begins with Jesus. It all starts with grace. The old nature, Adam and Eve tried to like hide their old nature. The old nature, we can't cast it off ourselves. We can't just shake it. We can't just hide it. The new nature is only found in belief in Jesus. It's accepting the good news, the gospel, that Jesus loves us right where we are. Jesus loves us while we're hiding. Jesus loves us as we're sinners. That Jesus loves us and dies on a cross for us. Out with the old and in with the new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and see, the new has come. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ. In other words, before Jesus, we had to cover ourselves. We had to find temporary relief for our sin. But with Jesus, we get to be in the presence of God, not because of anything we've done, but only through belief in Jesus Christ. We get a new nature that is found in faith. The old nature is gone, and the new nature is here. That Christ nature is here. And when that Christ nature gets a hold of you, uh, everything about you changes. Your, your disposition changes. You know, for me, on Thursday nights, ah, I don't really want to go to the community. That's my old nature speaking. That's my old nature creeping in. But my new nature is like, yeah, get me rooted. My new nature is like, Acts, Acts 2. Let, let's be together. Let, let, let's connect. Let's, let's pray together. Let, 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 let's, let's be together. Let's break bread together. Let's support each other. Let's encourage each other. And so when that new nature gets a hold of you, your disposition changes to, I am for God. I am with God. The gospel is at work in my life. So let's go. Let's get connected. Hurry up. Let's go to church. Let's go. And at the root of it all is Jesus. At the root of it all is Jesus. Everything, let me show you how Jesus being the foundation kind of shifts, kind of, kind of shifts your, your, how it changes everything. We, we can read Acts chapter 2, all the things that I just shot off, right? That, oh, wow, like they're, they're, they're together all the time, and they're praying together, and they're breaking bread. How awesome. Oh, my gosh, they're, like, supporting each other. Oh, and they're meeting each other's needs. Oh, my gosh, how, like, that's like the sound of music. Ah, oh, that's so beautiful. I want that. It's almost magical. That's what I want. But don't get confused. Their community life was experiencing the fruit of their faith. The community was experiencing the fruit of their faith. At the root of their community was Jesus. The foundation of their community was I said yes to the gospel, and the gospel has changed me. And I know so many of us have stories just like that. We have story all, all around. I could go around this room, and we can all share stories of, of, of how we were struggling, we were isolating, we were alone. But thanks be to God that here we are today. Here we are today. I'm not that old man. I'm not that old person. I used to be that. I used to be bound up in sin. But I, I'm, I'm going to step into the freedom that God has for me. And, and, and this is where we'll close. And, and we're almost done. Point number four. Because we're, we're all, I've, I, I've barely talked about community. And, and, and the whole point of this, the whole point of this is that it leads us into a community that was meant to be irresistible. Like the community of Acts 2 describes a community that is meant to be irresistible. You know, they go to church together on Sunday. Uh, you know, they gather together to study the scriptures, but to pop it into modern day language, they're together on Monday. They're texting in the group chat. Like, hey, you know, it's a beautiful day. Anyone want to go on a walk with the kids? You know, they're, they're together. You know, they're, they're, they're saying, okay, you know, they, they get together and they, they read their Bibles and they study sometimes, but other days it's like, hey, it's Taco Tuesday. Like, anyone want to go get tacos tonight? 
You know, they're sharing prayer requests together. And then the next day, they're, they're watching a Blazer game together. They're just living together. Community isn't, and we're going to talk about this more over the next couple of weeks, but community isn't only just getting together to study the Bible. It's living life together. It's eating together. It's breaking bread together. It's going to the park together. It's playing pickleball together. If anyone wants to teach me how to play pickleball, I'm very down. <laughs> I just bought two rackets, and I, I want to play pickleball. That's what I want to do. <laughs> being a Christian isn't just about coming to church. It's about being a disciple of Jesus, doing our best to follow him. But how can we do that if we're not surrounding ourselves with people who inspire us to be better disciples of Jesus? You do this through community. And, and, and band, you guys can come on up now. Um, this is where we'll close. Um, when you do this, you start living a life that Acts describes as irresistible. In fact, it says that it was so irresistible that God added to their numbers daily. Daily. Because when you have a community that encourages you, that inspires you, that prays for you, and supports you, that meets each other's needs, people see that and people want that. And, and again, we'll, we'll talk about specifically more what this means over the next few weeks, but I want you to know that there are communities available here and now. Um, if you're feeling the spirit move of, of you know, I want to take that step out of, of isolation. I want to step into community. I know Pastor Jeff is, it leads a Tuesday night group where they watch the, the Blazer game. I know, I know Liz Jacob has uh, a happy hour community that meets that you can find out more online. Pastors Kip and Pam Jacob are leading a marriage community Thursday nights. And, and there's many more. I mean, Tamara Presley, I think, has a hiking group or a walking group. And, and, and there's others that are more Bible, centri uh, Bible study centric. It's all available online at southlakechurch.com slash better together. But, but God has designed the church not to be Sunday to Sunday, but to be consistent daily relationship. That the church would be stronger midweek than it would be on Sunday. That your old nature wants you isolated and alone. The enemy wants to keep you there, wants to lock you in there. But through the blood of Jesus on the cross, we can step into true community with God and each other. Be a part of an irresistible community where people are coming along alongside each other, supporting each other, encouraging each other, praying for one another. And, and it's a community that people want to be a part of. Let's go ahead and pray before we take uh, communion together. Father, I, I just thank you so much for the people that are here, the people who call South Lake home. You really have blessed this church with an awesome community, God. And so, Father, right now, I just pray over anyone who's feeling isolated, anyone who's feeling alone, God. May you meet them right where they are. May you send your spirit right now over them so that they feel connected to you, God. And, Father, I pray that you would inspire them to take the next step, that, that their, their fire, that their faith that they have in you wouldn't just sit here with you, but it would, it would, it would, it would put them in community, God. Father, wherever that community may exist, maybe it's here at South Lake, maybe it's somewhere else, may that community support them, encourage them, and just live life together, God. Thank you so much for your people, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let's prepare to take communion now in person here online. Uh, go ahead and grab the elements here at home there, whatever you've got. That It's not about the elements themselves, it's our faith in what they represent, which is the body and the blood of Jesus. So let's go ahead and take the, uh, the little wafer here first. Why don't we hold this up? Would you just hold this up before the Lord? Represents the body of Christ beaten, bloodied, broken, so that we could be whole. That's what salvation means, soteria. The Greek word, wholeness. Spirit, soul, and body, wholeness because of his brokenness. 
But now listen. The body of Christ, which was physical when it was here on earth, is now where? Well, in this room, it's all around us. It's here on the stage, it's sitting, it's outside, home, or wherever you're watching from, it's people around you. This is us, too. It's him in us, but it's us. So, wholeness relationally, togetherness, connectedness comes because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. So every sin that would separate you, not just from God, but from any person in life has already been dealt with. That is absolutely, as Jonathan said, the foundation of our relationships with each other. So the thought that I'm not good enough for community has to be, I mean, it's an offense to the cross to think about, to think that way, isn't it? If you think about it. So don't allow shame or guilt that's been dealt with to keep you from other people in your life. You cannot be good enough. What do we always say? You can only be in love enough. That's grace. That's the grace of God. And that's the foundation of our church. It's the foundation of our relationships with each other. And so, Lord, we lift up this wafer, cracker, chip, (laughs) whatever it is, in our hand. We hold in our hand, Lord, that which represents the wholeness we have with you in union with Christ, but now, Lord, the wholeness that we have with each other. Where God has a son, I have a brother. Where God has a daughter, I have a sister. And we are one. We are together, and we are connected and united forever and ever through Jesus, through this. We're the body of Christ. We're the body of Christ. So, Lord, we give thanks for your body, broken for our wholeness, and we eat now in celebration of that life in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and eat it together. you, Lord. Go ahead and take the cup, juice, juice, whatever you have there. Go ahead and lift that up if you would as well. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your, your blood that was shed. In fact, just go ahead and praise him now. Would you, would you lift up your voice loud enough wherever you are, at home, here in the room? person. Let's lift up our voices just quietly, at least loud enough for you to hear yourself, though. Let's praise him. Lord, we praise you. Just whatever's on your heart right now. Lord, we give thanks for the great sacrifice, for the great, just what you did, the lengths to which you went, Lord, uh, to sacrifice for us. Lord, we are so unworthy. you so worthy, and yet, Lord, you paid it all. Thank you for your willingness to bear all of our sin and shame. Thank you for your blood, the Lamb of God, sinless, spotless, but we receive it now, Lord Jesus. We worship and praise you for the blood you shed for us. Thank you, Lord, and for our relationships. Thank you. God, may we value our relationships based on what we're holding right now in our hand, what it represents. May we value as we value bloodshed. May we value one another, because that's that's what you do, Lord. That's what you do. So help us. Help us, Lord. Fill us with the Holy Spirit, as we talked about last week. Spirit of God, would you come upon us now as we take this together to this drink, now as we worship in this next song. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Let's go ahead and drink it together.